Hey Pool fans, welcome back to my channel. I have got an exclusive chat with the legend, the pundit king. Is that a fair point? Well, no. The the pauper prince. No, definitely not. Phil, he's a legend of the game. We've got 10 quick fire questions, but it probably won't be quick because I know you like to rattle on a little bit. Well, with my body shape, I do very few things quickly. So it might be difficult. <laughs> right, let's get into it. Thanks to Phil for uh, sparing 10 minutes out of his busy schedule. First question, how and when did you start commentating? Okay, well, I was always very interested in snooker. I played at a reasonable amateur level. And in 1988, I used to work for a betting firm, Ladbrokes, actually. And I decided, after going to the Open Golf Championship, that I wanted to go into sports journalism. So I thought the best vehicle was to go and uh, maybe get into snooker journalism. A friend of mine, Les Adams, who was a former Midland Amateur Champion, and another friend, Stan Bate, again, former Midland Amateur Champion, both knew Clive Everton well. Clive needed a junior. I started with him in September 1988. And within uh, two years and three months, I'd done my first commentary at the World Masters, and it all went from there. That's awesome. What a story that is. So what year was that? So I started snooker journalism actually writing stuff um, for Snooker Scene magazine and for newspapers in September 88. And I started commentating in January 1991. That is class. That is absolutely class. Right. What is your favourite sport to commentate on? I think I'll give you two answers. In terms of enjoyment, I love doing golf because you're doing so many different players at the same time. And every week, the course is different. So obviously, if you're in watching a pool match or you're watching a snooker match, whether you're in Bangkok or Bournemouth, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> and you're only commentating on two people at the same time. I do enjoy snooker because obviously I know the game inside out. And so it's second nature to me. But I really enjoy pool because it's still a relatively new experience. The guys are so friendly. And uh, I think it's one of those sports where anything can happen. No, I agree. I totally agree. I thought you were going to say snooker, but it is a pool channel, mine, so that was good thinking getting that one in. Question number three. What is your most memorable match in pool? If there's one pool match that stands out over the years, whether you was commentating on it or you were watching it, what springs to mind? Well, definitely commentary was when David Arcady beat Alexander Kazakis with that length of the table double in the World Masters final in Gibraltar. That was something else, wasn't it? You just had the feeling all the way through that Kazakis was going to make the mistake that would cost him. But you never imagined that al Qaeda would win it like that. Yeah, it was pretty special, to be fair. Good answer. And I thought he was going to go something older, but that is a good answer. That was, I was there. I wasn't commentating on the match. I was stood at the side of the arena. And obviously, David's friends, everyone was there, and the old atmosphere. And you just, like you say, you just felt Kazakis was going to blow up and blow up. He did. Question number four Did you come from a Q Sport background? Did you play? Oh, very much so, yeah, yeah. My father took me to my first ever World Snooker Championship when I was 10 years of age. Um, he was a, a Q Sport enthusiast, he wasn't a great player, but he loved the game. And then he took me to, to play in snooker halls. And then. Um, I went to university when I was 18, came back when I was 21, I mean, graduated, and I really got into it. I was playing literally seven days a week. That's why I don't drink now. I don't drink at all. Nothing to do with ethics or, you know, um, being fit. It's just purely and simply because I was playing every single night after work. And when you play, you can't drink at the same time. And therefore, when I did try to have a drink, it was just ridiculous. I was getting, you know, overcome by the drink after a pint or two. And then the following morning, I feel awful because I wasn't used to it. So that's why I stopped drinking completely, which is maybe 30 years ago. But yeah, I absolutely loved snooker. I made four centuries in practice. And it's the greatest feeling in the world when you make a century because you can win trophies, can't you, at amateur level? Fair enough, but it all depends on the the standard of the opposition, but you've got to play well to make a century. And I'll never forget the first one I made. I got a really good chance of a total clearance, actually, and I completely and utterly abdicated my <laughs> responsibility to make the clearance by trying to roll the pink into the middle pocket to keep it safe to make the three figures. And when you commentate, does that shot come back up and you think, oh, that's the shot I missed? <laughs> well, I didn't actually miss it. I refused to play safe for the next red because I was so desperate to make the century. So, yeah, I like to think I made a century break and I've had a hole-in-one in golf. So, you know, one more can you want for that, really? 
Right, I'm going to add a little sneaky question in. It's not down on the list. What's your highest break? I know you said four centuries. What is the highest break you've done? Well, in, in a practice frame, which is the only thing you can go on, I made 112. I don't know, like, you know, total clearances in lineups, but they, they don't count. But I had four centuries in total anyway before I stopped playing. Handy with a Q, isn't it? There, you didn't know that. Uh, next question. Who is your favourite sports person? Well, you see, I'm of a certain age. I'm 59 years of age now. And so when you're young, you're impressionable, aren't you? And your heroes then remain with you now. So I'll give you two. I'll give you my current favourite sports person and the one that's the one that stuck with me, Jack Nicholas, the golfer. 18 majors. He finished second on so many occasions as well and third on countless occasions. So Jack Nicholas would be my ultimate hero. As regards to currently... I would say it's Shoei Otani. You've probably never heard of him. Who is Shoei Otani? Well, baseball fans would know he's the first real all-around player for 100 years since Babe Ruth. He can pitch brilliantly and he hits home runs for fun. Plus, he plays for the team I've supported for 20 years, 30 years, the Anaheim Angels. That was my next question. What is your favourite sports team? Is it football? But I'm guessing you're going to say baseball now. I support West Bromwich Albion, have done all my life. But yeah, my big passion is MLB. I absolutely love baseball. I went to California on holiday in 1991. A friend of mine invited me over there. We'd met him at the Open Golf Championship the year before. He invited me to stay at his house. And when we were there, he took me to a baseball match. And I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm not going to enjoy this. And I absolutely loved it. It's got so many stats and different quirks. The green of the pitch and... <laughs> Oh, I just loved it. And the stadiums are fantastic. Plus, the food in the stadiums, fantastic. So, latched onto the, well, they were the California Angels then. Now they're the Anaheim Angels, uh, or Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, actually, we call them the Angels, basically. And they've won a World Series in the time I've been following them. Haven't done so well lately, but they've got the show Otani, who's from Japan, who is out of this world. And they've got a player regarded as the best player in baseball, Mike Trout, so, yeah, first thing I do in the morning, turn the computer on, find out the baseball scores. That's amazing. I, I know absolutely nothing about baseball. When you said Babe Ruth, I've heard of Babe Ruth, but there'll be a lot of American pool fans watching this, and I'm sure they're going to be as surprised as me to know that. Right, that's the last sports-type question. This is going to be quick fire now. What is your favourite place to go in the whole wide world? Well, the desert southwest in America. Um, I play a lot of golf and it's just brilliant out there. Until COVID hit, we went every summer and myself and my brother would just enjoy ourselves so much. Scottsdale, near Phoenix, Vegas, Mesquite, Nevada and also Palm Springs. So that would be my favourite place. That's a very good choice. Favourite food? Favourite food would be Indian, closely followed by Mexican. Good choice Least again. favourite food, English by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> favourite drink, following on from food? Well... It's, it's got to be Diet Coke. Yeah, it's, it's two favourites. <laughs> I drink too much of this stuff. Yeah, I'll give John Daly a run for his money. Yeah, Diet Coke. Yeah, I'm only saying that because just behind the camera, there's about four cans waiting, freezing <laughs> yeah. cold. Favourite movie? Favourite movie, I would say um, it would be Field of Dreams, which is a, a baseball-inspired film in which Kevin Costner starred. I also love Chariots of Fire. Awesome, Phil. You're a legend. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for doing that interview. Everybody, Phil Yates.